Hello everybody, my name's Simon Bradwell from EBM Pabst here in Melbourne and today I want to talk to you about upgrades in backward curve fan technology. So, most of you will be aware that over the last 10-15 years backward curve fans have become much more common. They've typically replaced forward curves in a lot of ventilation applications and this is because the market is requiring higher and higher air efficiencies and backward curve fans have high power efficiency. So here's typically a backward curve fan and you'll remember from my previous videos what happens inside a backward curve fan is the air comes in here in this direction into the mouth of the fan and gets thrown out at 90 degrees by the back side of the impeller. So the impeller would rotate like that turning towards you as I've shown. Now this type of product gets used in a range of applications. Um, from residential ventilation units to electronics cooling to cabinets to refrigeration to big ventilation units and up to sizes in one meter in size um, into big air handling units and air conditioning systems. It's very typical and very common. This kind of product is available in three types of assembly. There's the impeller, the motorized impeller as we call it here on its own. Uh, we can put this inside a, um, an injection molded plastic housing as shown in the diagram. And it's also available as spider mounts. But two really important um, other components that go with a backward curve fan are an inlet ring and an airflow grid, which sits on top. And I'll talk about that in the moment. First of all, as I said earlier, we've been driven for higher and higher efficiencies, and we've made significant design changes with respect to our products in the market now. So these products that I'm holding here are available in 175 millimeter, up to 630 millimeters in size. What we've been able to do is to increase the mouth size. So this increases the air volume. We've been able to change the dynamics of the impeller, particularly the back face and the blades, as you can see here and you can see in the image. Um, and we've been able to change the diameters of the, of the back face versus the diameter of the front face. And all of these design changes are driven by higher energy efficiencies and lower noise. So let's have a look at these other components that need to go with the fan. First of all, it's really important that you use an inlet ring. This is an inlet ring, and what the inlet ring does is guide the air into the product. Now, typically this is mounted one millimeter, say, inside the product. I'm just gonna, for, for convenience sake, I'm just gonna put it on the inside at the moment, but obviously in real life, it wouldn't have physical contact. Um, and then on top of this is the airflow grid. So the airflow grid sits, sits on top like that. And what the airflow grid does is regulate and clean up the air going into the product, reduces the turbulence. So, and any form of turbulence, like you can see in this image here, any form of turbulence creates higher noise and lower efficiency. So we want to remove it as much as we possibly can. And you can see here that the airflow grid does that. So for instance, say the product is mounted up against the metal side here on the right hand side where my hand is, this blanking plate would obviously affect the airflow going into the fan. Um, and therefore the use of an airflow grid like this in such applications is vitally important. So today I've talked to you about backward curve fans in general in where they're used, typically how they're assembled some of the design aspects of backward curve fans and what's important, and it's also the importance of ancillaries such as the inlet ring and the airflow grid that increases energy efficiency and reduces noise. I hope that's been useful for you. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please contact us in the normal way. Thank you.